Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program, The Platform. On this program, we examine the national issues of the Bahamas and it's good to be here on this program today. And uh, today on our program, we are going to discuss a matter of uh, national interest, I think it is, because uh, many dentists in the Bahamas are very concerned about who is really practicing dentistry in the Bahamas. Uh, we have seen in media in recent times uh, some concerns of some people in the dental profession of uh, people who are participating in the profession and working in the profession who are really not qualified. And so uh, you have to be careful who you allow to go in your mouth. On our program today, we are pleased to have the Registrar of the Bahamas Dental Council, Dr. Sparkman Ferguson. And when you hear the name Sparkman Ferguson, you, you think about music, but he is that too. A uh, great uh, organist, great musician, but today we are not talking music, we are talking dentistry. Dr. Sparkman Ferguson, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Randall. Uh, it's, it's good uh, that you're here today, and congratulations yet on a, another wonderful recital that I heard you had at Christchurch Cathedral. Thank you. Recital went very well, and I think our public also received it very well. Very good. Uh, you've been in dentistry for how long now? Uh, 35 years. 35 years? Mm -hmm. uh, graduated from Harvard University? Yes. And uh, you are a fellow of... Um, the American College of Dentists. Uh, the American College of Dentists. Mm -hmm. How many practicing dentists do we have in the Bahamas, professional dentists? The number is around between 80 and 85. O across the Bahamas? That's correct. But mostly in New Providence, Mostly right? in New Providence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I said at the uh, opening, um, I've seen in some uh, portions of media in the country uh, some concerns about um, who is really practicing dentistry in the Bahamas. Mm. Firstly, who would you say is a qualified dentist? Mm. A qualified dentist would be a person who is uh, trained, who is registered, and who is licensed to practice dentistry in the Commonwealth. Who is trained, who is licensed, and registered. And registered. Correct. If you're not registered? If you're not registered, then you, you're you not considered a person that's uh, uh, on our list of those who are qualified to practice. So if you were practicing in some other country, mm -hmm. and you were registered in some other country, mm -hmm. but not registered in the Bahamas, you're not qualified? You're not. You're qualified, but you, you've got to be registered in our jurisdiction to practice in the Bahamas. Okay. And so if somebody wanted to come into the Bahamas, they would have to uh, apply uh, for registration and licensure here. And that would, uh, they would have to go through all the criteria, immigration, and, um, um, and so on and so forth. Some people even have to be examined. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have to have uh, a degree um, in dentistry to practice dentistry? Yes. You answered that very quickly. Yes, you must, you, you must have a degree in dentistry to practice dentistry. <laughs> this is no profession that you can be grandfathered in. This is no profession you can be grandfathered in, no. Not at all. Okay. So, so you, you, you've had to uh, have gone to a recognized college or university mm -hmm. and um, uh, did your courses in biology and chemistry and all, all of that in order to become a dentist? Well, first of all, you do those things uh, in order to get to go to dental school, mm -hmm. the biology and chemistry and so on, and then you get to professional school where you learn and train to become a dentist. And those other things uh, are part of the early part of the training, but the majority of the training um, is actually preparing and working uh, on and with patients with, with, uh, in a health way. So it is a more, more, a more practical when you are in dentistry school then because you would have known um, the rudimentary uh, issues uh, and so you, you, you go to dentistry school actually to practice? You actually practice while you're in a student, yes. Okay, but mm -hmm. I want to know what do you learn? 
Take me through uh, a first-year person in dentistry school, for instance. A first-year person in, in dentistry school actually would go to a medical college of, of, of the school. And in that medical college, you learn what's called the basic sciences. So you're going back all through your uh, anatomy, physiology of the entire body, uh, all of the basic sciences, histology, and then you go from there into the disease parts of things, microbiology. And then you go into pathology, which is um, the study of disease. And so you, you've got all this basic groundwork, like, just like a medical doctor is trained in the first year. Uh, because you train together pretty much in the first year. So everybody gets through basic sciences. And then after year one, uh, medical uh, students go in one direction and dental students go in another direction. And, and, and they go about the business of learning to become a medical doctor and dentists go about the business of training to become a dentist. Okay. And so, so you go into pharmaceuticals as well? Pharmace pharmaceuticals is one of the uh, major areas in the basic science studies. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, the concern about people who are practicing who ought not to be practicing. How widespread is that in our country? Uh, to, to answer you directly, we are coming more and more, uh, getting more and more of this knowledge that people in different areas are beginning to branch out. And um, when, when we say practice dentistry, I think we need to start by um, defining what that means. Anyone who does not have a license who puts their hands in somebody's mouth for a fee, you're practicing dentistry, okay. whether you're a dentist or not, according to the law. Once you place your hands in a patient's mouth for a fee, you are practicing dentistry, whether you're a dentist or not. Okay. So that's, that's our definition. Okay, that's your definition. Right. So a, a dental hygienist, mm -hmm who does not have a degree like yours. Correct. You are a doctor of dental science surgery. surgery. Mm -hmm. um, he or she is not a doctor of dental surgery as you are. But he but, or she. But he or she is uh, a dental hygienist working in the mouths of people. Correct. Um, that person is practicing dentistry. That's right. That person is also a legal person practicing dentistry. Okay. Because that person, uh, that their degree is called registered dental hygienist. Okay. And they are the, the second tier, if you wish, in dentistry. After the dentist comes the dental hygienist. And, and that person is uh, particularly trained, once again, in a college or university, uh, even up to a bachelor's degree level. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that person's training uh, uh, prepares them for a certain aspect of dentistry, particularly that has to do with the cleansing of the mouth and the maintenance of the mouth. Are you saying to me then that a dental hygienist uh, should know how far to go? A dental hygienist doesn't know how far to go. Th that person knows how far to go. The, a Correct. dental hygienist would not try to, to uh, uh, do an extraction, for instance. No. No. A trained individual does know the boundaries. Okay. Have you had uh, um, experiences or has uh, it come to the attention of your dental council where someone uh, has been s trying uh, extractions and not qualified? Yes. This, in fact, we've had this uh, happen just recently in Freeport uh, where a, a dental assistant, now we're bringing another term, mm -hmm. this is a person who may be trained or trained on the job to assist the dentist. Uh, in the absence of her doctor, took it upon herself to remove a tooth. And this is when it became very, very serious because such a person has absolutely no training. Uh, all this particular person did was watch their doctor in action over time and all of a sudden one day decided, well, he is not here. I think I can do this. And so this particular person uh, decided, all right, I'm going to engage in surgery. And that's exactly what the person did. An extraction is actually surgery. It is actually surgery. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, if, if a, a dental assistant mm -hmm. has been watching you mm 
-hmm. for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, every single day, mm -hmm. uh, you're saying that no matter how long they've watched you, mm -hmm. that they should not try an extraction. Absolutely. Uh, for many, many reasons. Number one, um, uh, the, the, the main reason being that, first of all, they're not qualified to do, to do that. Number two, they're not trained to do that. And number three, they're not licensed to do it. Yeah, but uh, let's, let's be practical now. Mm -hmm. There are a whole lot of people who are not trained to do a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but they go through various apprenticeships. Yeah. And as an apprentice, mm -hmm. they watch the professional person for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm reducing it now to, say, a plumber helper helping a plumber for years. Yeah. And uh, one day the plumber doesn't come to work and the, the, the helper believes that, well, I can do that, that thing. And mm -hmm. he does it successfully. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I'm suggesting that after watching you for 15 years every day, mm -hmm. and I see how you um, use the, the needle, mm -hmm. um, how you inject the person, mm -hmm. that, well, you know, I, I, I can do that. Mm -hmm. This is a simple matter. Sure. And perhaps this is exactly what this particular person thought. Mm. Uh, the trouble is that uh, an individual who thinks like that and who, who carries that out is actually placed somebody's life at risk. And breaking the law. And breaking the law along with that. Mm. And so the, 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 the patient is actually in extreme danger to have somebody who has no knowledge of pharmaceuticals, has no knowledge of injections, where to inject, how much to inject, who not to inject, who not to inject with this particular drug or that particular one, who takes on this, this, this job and decides that I'm going to go ahead and try this. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a matter of grace that the person who, or the persons whom she actually did this to uh, did not uh, die. Dr. Sparkman Ferguson, I'm going to throw this in. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many people who are watching you in the family islands mm -hmm. because uh, we uh, f cable through the courtesy of Cable Bahamas, we are seen in many islands of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And um, some older folk in our country will tell you, man, you know, um, I'm in Abaco mm -hmm. and um, I have extracted the tooth of, of people from time to time. Mm -hmm. Or I'm in Tees Bay, uh, Tee Bay Cat Island, or mm -hmm. I'm in San Salvador, mm -hmm. and we don't have any dentists here. But we do. No, no. The, 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 the point is uh, that they would say in the family islands mm -hmm. they've been extracting teeth mm -hmm. for a very long time without the assistance of dentists. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? Um, I would respond to you by saying that in those days and in that time, I, I would believe that they probably did what they felt that they had to do. And they didn't use drugs to do this, obviously. They were just uh, probably ran into a loose tooth that was bothering somebody and said, listen, you know, you know take a, a, a drink of uh, rum here and, you know, get a little bit tipsy and then, you know, at some time later on I'm going to go and just grab that and yank it out for you. And it did happen like that in the 30s and 40s. And 50s. And 50s, perhaps. Uh, but uh, times have changed. We are a different place in time in our development. We've moved on. We have uh, trained professionals uh, uh, stationed in Abaco. We have uh, trained professionals that go to San Salvador. So things mm -hmm. have changed quite a bit. But you know, uh, uh, are you also suggesting that with, with children uh, the teeth of children, mm -hmm. young children, who yeah. are changing Correct. Um, uh, teeth. Mm -hmm. um, they are four years old, and yeah. uh, that they should go to a dentist for the extraction? I, well, let me answer you like this. You and, m and, and myself, both of us, we had our parents remove our baby teeth. Right. They did. Right. Okay. Um, and that is the kind of thing, and, and parents now still pluck those baby teeth out for children. Right. Uh, if they get very, very loose, 
and they don't they feel like they can just do this right now and get it over with right but there are also parents who actually decide that they're not going to do that they're going to go and get professional treatment okay so uh do we can we fault a, a parent for 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 helping a baby tooth out of the mouth the answer is no but that's not the same as one of your jaw teeth Good. trying to remove. Good, but let's go back to the child. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it then, uh, um, would you encourage parents to uh, extract the, the, the baby tooth? I would not encourage that, but um, as a product of it myself, I know there's no real harm that a parent would do if they were to pluck a baby tooth from the mouth. Okay. No real harm. No real because harm Because most of the time, it's just sitting in the gums. And right. it just, it'll, it'll bleed for five minutes and it'll be over. Good. But uh, you are suggesting it's advisable to attend a dentist? It is advisable because uh, in plucking that, you, you can give the child pain, which you don't want to have to do. Um, um, or you could have a situation where that tooth is a little more anchored than you think it is, now you're causing the child a lot of pain and you may start tearing the gums and doing all that kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. So it would be better to have the child come in, have that, 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 that those gums numbed there and have it removed properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so a, a, a go, going back to the dental hygienist, that person's responsibility is uh, mainly the cleansing of, of teeth? Mainly the cleansing of teeth but uh, the, the job entails a lot more than that right? when, you, when you get the entire scope of it. Because the dental hygienist, although their main focus is to cleanse the mouth, they aid in uh, doing what we call charting of, uh, of gum diseases. They do diet counseling and, and things like that also for patients. Diet counseling? Yep. Why diet counseling? Because uh, in, in, in their training, part of their training is to, like a, dental, a dentist training, is to coach patients on how uh, and when not to consume too much sugar in their diet for the sake of their oral health. So that's part of their training. I, I, I would have thought that that is the job of a, of a dietitian. We assist dietitians. We don't write meal plans, but we assist them. Um, um, not for their purpose, but for our purpose, so that we can have the person have less sugar in their mouth to cause tooth decay. Mm -hmm. So that's our, that's our contribution to dietary sciences. What, what, uh, what did you do, or what uh, is the dental uh, council doing uh, with respect to people who uh, you would have heard or, or, or that you know uh, would be practicing dentistry? without authorization? Uh, the dental council, first of all, once we know that something is happening, we seek to uh, gather the relevant information that have to do with it. Um, in this particular case we spoke about in Freeport, we had to order the closing of the office because it was a public health risk, the office itself. Um, so there was a person in Freeport actually practicing dentistry uh, without uh, the certification? Correct. And people were attending this person's office? Uh, the office didn't belong to that person. That person was manning the office. Oh, I see. Okay. For, for a regular dentist? For a regular dentist who was not on the premises when these things took place. I see. Mm-hmm. And what, 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 is your council then empowered uh, to bring certain sanctions against that particular dentist who would have allowed that? The council has the power to discipline the doctor. Mm. The actual dental assistant who performed the procedure is not under the dental council. That's a civilian whom becomes the matter for the police and the matter for the Attorney, Gen Attorney General's office. Right. Um, there is a provision in the law that states clearly, um, um, well, the, the Dental Act is actually written for those who are actually practicing and registered and licensed. It's not intended for civilians mm -hmm. because it's not thought that civilians would actually be doing, engaged in the practice of dentistry. But once civilians 
like this particular person crossed the line, now the dental act has a clause in there that states that if you practice dentistry without a license, which is what that person is then doing, then you're subject, if you're prosecuted, to a fine and imprisonment. Okay. So anyone who is practicing dentistry uh, without being licensed to do so mm -hmm. is subject to a fine or imprisonment. Or both. Or both. Mm -hmm. According to the Dental Act. The dentist who allows such to happen in his office, mm -hmm. what is the, the penalty? The penalty for that is, um, goes to, it goes to a disciplinary procedure and the penalty is one to 12 month suspension, according to our law. Have you ever had to suspend anybody in, uh, in, in the Bahamas? Yes, we have. Uh, recently? Recently. You're giving me these one line or one word answers, but anyway. Uh, recently and recently. <laughs> All right, okay. Let's take a break here on the program. We're going to talk more dentistry with Dr. Sparkman Ferguson, but we take this break. We'll come right back.